What's up guys, Carlos Cortese here, and today we're going to cover how to get the most out of your Canon C70 Part 2. If you haven't seen it, make sure to check out part one of this series for the first five tips. Now that I've been using the camera for nearly two years, I have seven more pointers to help you maximize this amazing tool. Let's get to it. Tip number one is to use shutter angle. Shutter angle is the video equivalent of shutter speed. It uses angular measurements to mimic the rotating shutter in old film cameras, which controlled how much light each frame received. There are some awesome videos of shutter angles, so make sure to check those out if you want to learn more. But all you need to know is that a 180 shutter angle is the equivalent of the twice shutter speed rule when recording. The advantage of using it over shutter speed is that it applies to all frame rates. No more forgetting to switch the shutter speed when changing frame rates. With the shutter angle, you simply leave it fixed at 180 and it's one less thing for you to forget about on set. The image will automatically get darker when increasing your frame rate, just like it would if you would have changed your shutter speed. If you normally get creative with your shutter speed for different effects, check out this chart from RED to see the different shutter angle to shutter speed equivalents so you can apply them in this new setting. So, to save time and mistakes, use shutter angle instead of shutter speed. Tip number two is to use a cage. One of the annoyances I found with the C70 was that I couldn't seem to properly tighten the bottom plates on the camera. They will constantly come loose, resulting in repeating readjustments and loose fitting. The Condor cage fixed that problem. Not only did it give me a sturdy bottom base for different plates, it also allowed me to attach the camera on the center versus the side with its additional standard threads. Additionally, it gave me extra mounting points which came in handy for lav mics and other accessories. It's lightweight, low profile, has an HDMI protector, and will fortify your camera against accidental bumps. Quick tip, unless your camera will be constantly on a gimbal, don't install the side plate as it will require you to remove the C70 strap, making it harder to handle and easier to drop. So, for easier attachment options, make sure to pick up a camera cage. Tip number three is to learn C-Log2 and color profiles. As you probably know, c 2 gives you Canon's maximum dynamic range and amazing flexibility in post. However, while browsing different color profiles, I found that Canon's BT709 YDR gave me a near perfect look as what I would do in post with my c 2 LUTs. Which means if you are doing quick turnaround work or simply don't feel like grading, you can record an 8 or 10 bit codex with the BT709 YDR profile to get a gorgeous out of camera image. If you want to adjust this color profile, simply click the menu button, select the color profile page, choose the one you want to modify, click edit and set the parameters to meet your needs. Using the baked in color profiles can save you a ton of time on quicker projects while still retaining the rich color information of the 10 bit codec. However, if there is no rush and you have the proper editing machine, I suggest you use 10-bit C-Log2 or 12-bit RAW to give you the maximum color flexibility in post. I've never regretted recording anything in higher quality, but I have regretted the reverse. So to speed up your workflow, learn C-Log2 and color profiles. Tip number four is to optimize transportation. I've made some poor decisions when transporting my C70. From the soft Canon carry case to my ThinkPad book bag to even slinging it over my shoulder on horseback in Montana's wilderness. Eventually, I came to my senses and bought the Pelican 1510. To me, it's the ideal C70 production case. It's small enough to be considered carry-on luggage, yet big enough to house the C70 with the battery, a carry handle, my R7, three lenses, an extra BP60 battery, three Canon R7 batteries, my aperture portable light, HDMI cables, my OC external monitor, four Sony NP batteries, Rode lav mic, cleaning cloths, media case, base plate, screws, two locks to keep it secure, and an Apple AirTag so I can track it 24-7. It also comes with a custom divider system to tightly fit your gear. It's extremely rugged with tons of padding on the top, has secure latching locks, a pressure release valve, is 100% waterproof, although I wouldn't test it, has comfortable side carry handles and even a retractable luggage handle so you can roll it around town. Tip number five is to know your lenses. And I don't mean focal lengths, I mean your lens mounts. As you know, the C70 has a native Super 35mm RF mount, which gives you access to Canon's wide range of RF lenses. These lenses are extremely sharp, have better autofocus and IS response than EF glass, and feature amazing options like the 28-70mm 2.8. They also have a control ring which could be programmed to control a variety of manual settings to make onset changes easier. However, there are two drawbacks. Number one, they are very expensive, and two, you will need to deal with the 1.5 crop on this camera, which could be very limiting. 
Personally, I use a 24 to 70 in 99% of my projects. If I used RF glass, I would have to settle for a 35 to 105 millimeter, which would be a problem because I use a 24 millimeter often for wide B-roll shots. Thankfully, Canon was wise enough to give us the 0.71x adapter with the release of the C70, which allows you to use EF glass at a nearly full frame field of view by canceling out the crop, making it feel like a baby C500 Mark II. I'm not saying one is better than the other, it all depends on your intended use. If you don't need the 16mm wide shots and don't mind selling a kidney, then you can get the RF 16-35mm and the 24-70 which after the 1.5 crop results in a 24-52.5 and a 36mm to 105 respectively. However, if you get the 0.71x adapter and use an EF 24-105 f4, you will end up with the same focal range in one lens that will require two RF lenses to replicate. On top of that, with the EF option, you will get it for a fraction of the price and with an extra stop of light. Personally, I keep it simple. I use the 0.71x adapter and stick to two EF lenses, the 16x35 f4 and the 24-70 f2.8. However, I am considering getting the RF 70 to 200 mm for my telephoto because with the 1.5 crop or poor man zoom, I'll get a 105 by 300 mm, giving me a variety of focal ranges for any situation. So analyze your needs and know your lens mount. Tip number six is to use four channel audio. One of the benefits of a dedicated cinema camera are the superior codecs. The MXF file is the industry's gold standard, and aside from RAW, is my favorite codec to use on the C70. One of the many advantages it has over its MP4 counterpart is that you can record up to four channels of audio per clip. In the case of the C70, this allows you to program two channels to be ambient audio for running and gunning, and one channel to be a lavalier mic for interviews, giving you a killer documentary setup all in one camera. If you're using only one mic, you can also set up two of the channels at a lower volume, which protects you in case your audio peaks on the main channel. This is extremely helpful when doing corporate work, interviews, or anything with a wide volume range. So to set this up, first make sure you're recording in one of the XF ABC codecs. Then click the audio status button. Select the first tab, click the audio input selection, and make sure both channel one slash channel two and channel three and channel four have the same audio input whether it's built-in audio, input terminal, or mic terminal. Now click on the menu button. Go to the audio page on the first tab, then click channel one and channel two, and channel three and channel four. Then link channel one and channel two, and channel three and channel four. Now head to the second tab and make sure the channel three slash channel four audio recording is set to manual, then lower the channel three slash channel four level to your liking. Now you'll have two pairs of audio channels with the first two having the original volume and the bottom two working as a safety in case you peak your main audio. Finally, tip number seven is to use 10-bit 422 on your B-cam. While this tip is not directly related to the C70, it's still crucial to know. If you've ever done two camera interviews, then you know how much of a pain it could be to match their colors. Before I bought the R7, I used to film on the Canon 90D, and while being a great camera, it only recorded 8-bit video, which limited the color grade and made matching imperfect, time-consuming, and frustrating. As you know, the C70 can record in 10-bit 422 C-Log2 or C-Log3. So if you want to match it with another camera, make sure that the second camera is also recording in 10-bit 422 on a log profile so you can easily match them in post. The B cam doesn't even have to be a Canon. I have filmed with the C70 as the A cam and a Sony a7 IV and even an FX3 as the B cam. And as long as I was recording in 10-bit 422 on both cameras, matching colors was accurate and easy. That's it guys, seven tips to get the most out of your Canon C70. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. And if you want to see more awesome videography content, make sure to subscribe. Peace.